Okay, if you have a 2005 to 2013 Chevy Impala, you have probably heard this noise before. And what it is, in this case, is one of the actuators that goes to the, the air units. And what's bad about this is, even after I take my keys out, it still makes a noise. And it'll do this on and off without the keys in it and uh, can run down your battery. So today, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Finally got the no knocking noise or ticking noise to stop. And what it is, is it's an actuator. You got one behind the console, console here. You have one behind the console here. And then you have one on your fan motor here. And we'll drop these uh, glove box here and I'll show you those two. But the one I have to replace is the dreaded one behind the console here and uh, I'll show you how we do that with the glove box open to get to the actuators behind the glove box you just kind of put your hand in here just kind of push down lift up at the same time and those little tabs you got two little tabs right here these little tabs right here one here one here with the glove box drop down if you look inside here you can see the two actuators. You got one, get your hand out of the way, one right here, and then the other one is that one right there. And you see how it's connected with uh, two bolts, uh, two 932nd bolts, or 5.5 millimeter, millimeter bolts, but uh, I use a 932nd and it gets them off and then you also have that wire connector so it's a pretty easy uh, this side is pretty easy you just take those two bolts off disconnect the wire connector and it pulls straight back okay the one I need to re replace is on the driver's side so the first thing we got to do is get down here on the floorboard and we're gonna remove these two screws here. Got one here and one here. And they are nine thirty seconds. So I'm gonna take those off. Okay, next I'm gonna use my little plastic wedge here. Just to kind of pop this loose. Just pull pull back on the bottom here. If you just got something to wedge it in there, it just kind of you got these little tabs that You can do it with a screwdriver, but if you have one of these, they're really nice. They help keep you from breaking these tabs right here. It's just got four tabs on it. Can I see the four tabs? And now we got two bolts here. We got one here, one here. So this metal plate. We're gonna take that off. Next thing you want to do is you have two tabs you want to pop off. You got this one here, and you got this little black one here. I'll pop those off, and then I'll drop down this plastic cover here. Okay, to pop these top tabs. I see people just pull them off, but actually there's like a little div right here. Just put a little tool, a little screwdriver. You kind of get in between those, and then pull down, and it pulls right out. This way is the same thing. Just kind of get in between there. And then the whole thing just pulls out. And then you just twist. All right. That's got that loose. So you get this panel right here. I take those two off. And you got one more back there in the back corner. You got pop off also. So we got that panel lowered. You have a light connected to it and another little connection here just gonna leave that connected uh, but what that does for you is kind of lets you get underneath here 
and give you a little more area to work. That part right there behind this wiring harness. You can kind of see it. But you can kind of see why it's such a barrier to get to. And you have to be careful because these wires are uh, important to say the least. So with this panel off, I can actually hear it. This is it right here. And when I put my finger on it, I can feel it. And so I know it's bad. I know it's not doing what it's supposed to. So we're going to take that off. And same thing as on the other side. There's just two screws, a wiring harness, and then you just pull it straight back. Hopefully. Got the actuator out. Um, I don't like a lot. It was hard. It was harder than it looked. The other side is really easy and easy to get to. The driver's side, if you got the driver's side go out, I mean, it, it's a little bit harder. I ain't gonna like getting your hands up in there. Uh, still, just same thing. Just had two screws. It's got three holes, but it only had two screws. Had the wire harness. But the problem is um, trying to get the screws. It, the screws weren't too bad, but trying to get that wire harness off, you can't see it at all. You can't get your finger nails underneath the the attachment for the harness it was just it was really hard to get out uh putting it back in is going to be a bear uh but just just kind of show you how it works uh it was mounted like here's the wall of the car it was mounted up against like this uh on the center console there um and then while you there's going to be like a when i go to put it back in there's going to be on the, the fan door that goes up and down. There's a little white part that comes off. This slides, it slides in here. And this is what turns, this is what opens and closes the doors. This right here. And uh, so when I go to put this back on, uh, the new one may not be positioned the same way. And you can't turn it. There's gears inside here. You just can't just turn it. So when I go to put it back on, I'll put it on, I'll slide it on the white knob. And I may have to turn this open and close that door to where I want the, to where the screws will line up. And then not that I'll be able to see that point, but, uh, I'll just have to feel, just try to do my best to get the screws back in there. But, uh, just let you know, I hadn't, I wasn't able to find any video of anybody putting the driver's side in. I didn't know why I'm like, now I know why, but when I go to put this in, I'll, I'll see if I can't get an angle somehow and kind of, you can kind of see better of what I was doing. But, uh, I mean, you got to be a contortionist to try to get up in there and get this out, but good luck. Go get the part, put the new one in. Okay, so I just bought the new part, and it says it needs to be calibrated. To calibrate it, the first step you have to do is disconnect your battery, your negative terminal on the battery, so there's no power going to the car. So we got the battery disconnected. Okay, after you get the battery disconnected, the negative terminal disconnected, you're supposed to take the key, put it in the ignition, and then turn it to turn the ignition on, and then wait five minutes. And what this does is this discharges any retained um, accessory power. So it just there's no power going to go to this uh, actuator when we put it in. And then when we do put it in, it says not to try to physically turn the actuator part, but we got to, we're gonna turn the little plastic uh, part that the actuator sits on uh, to help calibrate it. And it says this is necessary, and if you don't do this step, uh, it, it, you know the part may not work properly. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna uh, wait five minutes, then reinstall the actuator, uh, plug all the power to it, then we'll reconnect the battery, and then we'll insert the key in the ignition, turn it on the on position with the engine off, and the system will uh, perform a self-calibration, which should take about five minutes. And it says also to not adjust the climate control unit until calibration is complete. And then you turn the key off, start the vehicle, and then test all the, all the functions. I just reconnected the negative battery cable, and then it said to put the key in the ignition, and turn on, turn to on position with the engine off, 
and it says the system will perform a self calibration which should take about five minutes do not in red <laughs> adjust the climate control unit until calibration is complete so we just let it do this for like five minutes and then when it's complete I, when I first turned it on you could hear it cycling through it automatically started cycling through the uh, uh, vent doors and different things I could hear it, everything changing uh, so I'm assuming that's part of the calibration uh, there's no clicking noise at the moment which is encouraging because I, I tell you putting <laughs> that back that thing back in that, that was that was crazy but uh, we got it back in there's no clicking noise um, so we're just gonna wait five minutes and then we'll uh, start the vehicle and then uh, test all these little switches and just make sure everything works all right well I just let the car cycle for five minutes with the on position I just turned it off now we're gonna turn it back on and we're going to all right so far it started that's always good <laughs> um, I don't hear any clicking noise now comes the fun part this is where I used to make the noise is when you go all the way down and start clicking no clicking everything switched over turn the air off it's working turn the air on we'll check the vents oh the vents are good just hit all the buttons and all we're doing here is just testing all the actuators all the different actuators just making sure I got, got it on my feet. I feel it on my feet. It's working. My daughter can drive to college now with air conditioning and without the clicking noise. Hopefully uh, this helps you out. If you got any questions about getting underneath the dash there, uh, I apologize for not taking any video. I just wasn't a way to get a camera up in there. But um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. If this helped you out, hit the subscribe button. And uh, y'all just get in there and try it. You'll figure it out. If I can do it, you can do it. All right.